Welcome back to the Alpha Strike guys and here we are for Deadpool and the X-Force our super rare reviews. We always say this is probably one you guys have been waiting for. We will precursor this with we will not be reviewing the chases in this video. That is going to be a separate standalone fifth video just because there's eight of them and there's going to be a lot of text there and a lot to cover and we still currently only have access to two of them. We're working on getting those. You may see those uh, hopefully shortly after this is released when we can get our grubby little hands on them so uh, to review them for you guys' viewing pleasure. But we're just going to jump right into this and help you guys look at these super rares and see which ones are worth uh, showing out the money for, trading for, and adding to your force and their relative power levels. Eric is starting us off with... Fenris. So they have one keyword, Hydra. Hail Hydra. They are 60 points and I gotta say, these guys are amazing. 60 points for 60 points i got them in a battle royale and they did not disappoint so she is the power i am the focus that is their attack power they have for the first four clicks of their dial when fenris makes a range attack modify their attack and damage values by plus two and choose one damage dealt is penetrating or the attack causes knockback jeez now, if you see their stats on the board there, you see they have a 9-2. That becomes an 11-4. For 60 points with 7 range and they have 8 speed running shot. And with Hydra keyword, I'm going to be putting some Hydras next to them. I don't know, ninjas? Anything with the Hydra team ability. Holy cow, right? Yeah. Just going to gun you down all day. Now, I'm not sure of the storyline between these two. Maybe you know more. Nope. Um, Sorry. Un Uncanny X-Men. I see, I see Magneto. They... I don't Strucker. They have Strucker last name. Mm -hmm. Well, they're Hydra. So that makes sense. <laughs> I wish I knew more about them. I was kind of surprised to see them in the set, but as like, you know, I can almost get past it with how powerful they are. And they have enhancements so they can give out more damage to other friendly rangers. So that's really cool. Last two is the dial. They have, uh, I think it's Force Blast. Yep, Pensai, 16 and twos. So, I mean, they are only 60 points. They do only have six clicks. That's 10 click, 10 points at a click. Ugh, that's pretty good in my With opinion. With all those powers, yeah. All those powers, dude. I think it's a good investment for any Hydra team. They're really a one-shot wonder. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck. <laughs> yeah, if you guys can get a hold of this guy, recommend it. If Hydra or not, break your theme. 11 attack with 7 range and 4 damage with either penetrating or knockback. And you're talking about 4 squares? Four up, squares. up to 4 squares at that point? Yeah, they're going off a roof and then they're taking falling damage. Yeah. Just, just good luck getting close to me. Yep. That's Fenris, guys. Alright, up next, Helltow. It's Bessie. Bessie! Uh, animal monster keywords, number 50. Um, extremely deep vampire dial. Uh, trait, vampire, uh, vampiric bovine. Begins the game on click six. Can use still energy and stealth. When she uses still energy, she may heal past her starting line. So I'm liking that stealth just yeah. because it's got support, top dial, sidestep with a uh, stop click, missed form. Three clicks there. Uh, I've said it in the last video and I, I've talked about it on three rows. Give this Hell Cal the Harley's Hammer and bop people. Go to town, have some fun. And. You know what's great about her? She has Indomitable, like all vampires should have, so she can just keep going. Just keep going. I'm you come base me, because I'm stealth. You're gonna have to hit me. Now that you're up close, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit all your people. And then I'm dealing with a hypersonic 12 attack, 19 defense, 5 exploit, indom flying, cow of death. Now <laughs> touch on that as well. Even at 50 points, if you never, ever heal this cow, she is a transporter with stealth, so she carries and sidestep with sidestep, and she has support. She heals your other characters. With indom. And yep. stop clicks. Two stop clicks. Guaranteed two hits. Two hits. Together. Well, almost guaranteed. Wow. We'll cover that in a second. Yep. But, uh, yeah, uh, this, this character, Hell Cow, as ridiculous, and I will say ridiculous again, as it looks is a welcome addition to any team, animal, monster, whatever. You name it, you got an excellent supporter out there. Okay, next up, we have the super rare of the X-Statics team, Dead Girl. 
and she's had some talks about her. She's pretty gnarly for a whopping 75 points. Has the headlines. When Dead Girl hits one or more opposing characters, after action resolve, give her a headline token. And those are basically tokens they come with to represent they have a token on her. Treat, she also has Living Dead Girl. At the beginning of your turn, if Dead Girl has at least one headline token, heal her one click. That's pretty good. So you get her one hit in, she's going to heal every turn. If Dead Girl has at least three headline tokens when she would be KO'd, instead return her to click three and remove all of her headline tokens. Whoa. To so click three? Yep. Whoa. I'm, I'm going to chime in here. She sure. was amazing. If, the, if I could get in a hit with her, because she's got a uh, sidestep on her second click and flight, she was able to break away when I started taking damage, get away, sit around for a few turns, heal back, get back in the fight with charge, blades, exploit with 11 attack, get another hit in, get those tokens built up, and then once she was built up, you know, she's just regenerating every turn. If you killed her, she came back on click three, I hit you, got one token back, run her off, let her heal up again, come back in, get you for another token, and then another one, just, it was all over the place. And then she's got X-Men TA. Yep. Put that on her. If she starts getting low, get her back in the fight. She's just amazing for 75 points. And she flies, so she can carry people in. And she has, I forgot to mention, X-Force, XX, Celebrity, and Mystical keyword. And then her last power there? This is by far the one thing everyone's like saying, oh my gosh. So, Tombstone, Talons, Coffin, Nails. Dead Girl can use Blades, Claws, Fangs. Period. Until the end of the turn, characters hit by dead girl can't use stop. She is literally the first character to be given the ability to stop stop, stop things with the word stop in it. Now, there was, of course, back in Trinity War, Blue Devil. Yep. Could do something similar. But she's the first one. He dealt that. damage, though, when those appeared. That, oh. Yeah, he was he forced two damage off of you, which is pretty good, too. But she's like, nope, psh, blow past all of it. It's not even there. That's scary. Guys. With blades at that. So, and it's when she hits. Mm -hmm. So she hits you, then deals you the damage. You're not stopping off that six blades. And she doesn't even have to exploit. use blades to do that either. Yeah. So it's so pretty good. Six blades exploit, or and you're not stopping. And two and two. Yeah. yeah. Just, wow. She's really good, so Late Dallas gets Flurry with the Prison Strike, 16 Simpsons is 1 or 2 damage. At this point, you want to try and get her away, like Mike said, heal her up, get her healing. And then if they do happen to get her, she can't get away fast enough, boop, hopefully you have those 3 health tokens, you're going to just come back to life on click 3, which is where you're back I on I see that. that card for just a second. One thing I wanted to double check before I go and say this, um, let's see, hits 1 or more opposing characters. So, she does have Flurry on her last 3 clicks, but you're not going to gain 2 headline tokens from that. Because nope. it says 1 or more, even if you Flurry, after the action is resolved, you still just get 1 token. Which so. is why I'm sure they worded it like that, because she has Flurry. Yeah. Next. Alright. Uh, Mistress Death. A lot of hubbub about this lovely skeleton lady. Um, number 52, Cosmic, Deity, Mystical. All nice. non-named, but all great generic keywords. Uh, trait, the realm of death expands. When another standard character is KO'd, remove an action token from Mistress Death. Be it friendly, be it opposing, she's losing an action token. Standard when people die. only. Yep, standard character, no pogs. Um, you can't kill death or marry her. I tried. I'm guessing you're quoting Deadpool there. When Mistress Death would be either that or uh, Thanos. <laughs> Uh, when Mistress Death would be KO'd, and there's another friendly character on the map, you may, you may, oh, that's may, uh -huh. instead place her in your starting area on click three with two action tokens, and the opponent scores her. This can't be ignored. So, it's still optional, guys. If you don't want to give them another shot at another 100 points, you don't have to. Yep. Uh, third trait, when Mistress Death hits with a close attack... Immediately place a touch of death token on the targets if or on the targets card There should be an apostrophe in there <laughs> if it doesn't already have one for the rest of the game When a character with a touch of death token is dealt damage by an attack double the damage dealt So this is what's been giving her a lot of hubbub 
this right here. If you can actually find a way to get her in with that phasing, poke somebody with 12 attack, even if you don't deal damage, they from now on, even when she dies, will take double damage. So I'm looking at this going, hmm, phasing teleport 10, Harley's hammer, just drop in the middle of your group, hit everybody. I don't even have to deal them damage, but you know, two, quake maybe. Oh yeah, you're gonna concentrate fire and kill her afterward. That's okay. In rolls cable with his uh, printed four. That's eight damage. <laughs> Blades flurry six. That's twelve and twelve. I'm oh. shooting you for threes. That's six. Shooting you for twos. That's four. I mean, sure, I'll give you a hundred points. You know, she's power cosmic. You can't outwit her. She's got shape change, shape change on her top dial. If you don't do something about her before I quake your whole team, it's over. That's pretty ruthless. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Carrying 35 point dupe. Dupe power. Everybody's next to dupe. Uh, <laughs> he sidesteps out. Uh, then Mr. Steth does giant reach quake. Hits everybody. Quake only hits opposing. You wouldn't even have to sidestep away. Well, no, because he, he. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's tiny. You can see right yeah, over him. Yeah. Just. Boom! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters, all death tokened, ready to start taking double damage. That, and keep in mind, that's only 135 points of your team, with a little bit of luck from Dupe rolling his uh, the attractive power three of Dupe. Three and four, it's pretty good. Oof. Ugh. I mean, you may be handing over 135 points to them, but the remaining 165 points of your team is just gonna wreck house. And they'll be like, well, I've made a mistake. <laughs> I have okay. wasted my life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so next up we have the great monster Sheikla. This is the one that can be turned into from the rare Sheikla if you do on the first or last click. Yep. She has Deadpool Core keyword. Monster Mystical Ruler. Great keywords. Real name unknown, once again. And she has this awesome, really, really awesome trait. Who dares attack Sheikla, Queen of the Underworld? When Sheikla is hit, after action resolve, choose one. Deal the attacker one penetrating damage, or deal the attacker two damage. Hmm, let's see. No reducers? Take two. Oh, impervious? Take one. Yeah. Blech. Invincible? Eh, take two, so you take one anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she, she gives out, like, it's not even Mystic's damage. It's just damage for hitting her. And then she has this defense power on the only top click of her dial, which is pure immutable form. Sheila can use invulnerability. When she does to reduce damage, unless the attack roll is doubles, reduce damage dealt by three instead. So she basically gets a super invulnerability where they have to roll doubles to even possibly damage her. Cause three is like the, the mainstream everyone has or less. There's a few fours out there, you know, heavy objects add, but I don't know, I mean, I'm pretty terrified to even try and attack her with anyone less than four damage because, like, um, you might shake all this off and yeah. or I take damage. That sucks. Because <laughs> that's only hit, too, for her. The thing is just hit and then dealt damage. Buh. And then after that, she goes, you know, charge with super strength, impervious, shape change, top two, of course. Down to sidestep, uh, blades, impervious, invuln, perplex in there. Last two clicks, stealth, poison, 18 with regeneration, and prob one damage. So, if you look at this way, if Sheikla happened to be on her last one from the rare, you're gonna come onto this one with stealth, poison, 18 with regeneration, and one prob, which you can use to regen her up to four, with six, right? One, two, three, four. You're up to sidestep, blades, impervious, two with perplex. There you go. 11 attack blades all, all, all day long. She is great, 160 points, Big, big part of your value. I do think she'll see more play coming in from the rare, not so much by herself. It Maybe. Will. I don't know. That top dial is definitely worth it. It can be. I played her in a battle royale, and she was a little slow. She doesn't have giant. She's actually normal sized. I thought she'd have a little more mobility, but the hindering slows her down, and yeah. no willpower to be, to be seen. All right. Up next, number 54, Swarm, Sinister Syndicate, and Scientist. Um... Trait, only the queen matters. Unless uh, the attack roll is doubles, swarm takes no more than one damage from attacks. So we're looking at 
double twos, double threes, double fours, double fives, and double sixes. And he does have a 16 defense, so you're looking at least double threes on 10 attacks. But you've got two rollouts with super senses and shape change. Um, then uh, special attack power, which he has first three clicks. Each time swarm hits an opposing character, after actions resolve, put a B swarm bystander adjacent to that character, unless there is already one. Yep. So, wow. This is uh, this is pretty intense. I heard some talk about uh, giving him the Hulkbuster arm to mm. give him energy explosion with, uh, you know, his uh, two bolts there with five range. So I hit two characters, everybody adjacent to him, everybody gets a B, and the B movement don't count towards your action total. So you can, you know, before you shoot again, move them away after they poisoned, shoot again, and now you've got a whole nother set of Bs out there. It's a lot of Bs. It's <laughs> a lot of Bs. Uh, the bees have flight, uh, their special movement power, they don't count, uh, poison, super senses, and tiny size. So not not blocking your line of fire. He also gets outwit uh, later in his dial. So if you, they're based with a bunch of bees, the outwit, and then poison, 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 until the rules change. Mm -hmm. uh, he does get, uh, starts with running shot, that special damage power. As we mentioned, uh, Shape Chain Super Senses drops into Hypersonic. I was going to say, is that Hypersonic? Yes, that's <laughs> Hypersonic B time. Wow. Uh, Precision Strike, only 9 attack though. Mm. And then uh, Super Senses with the Outwit. So he's able to move around. 120 points, a lot of survivability there. Do not, and I highly recommend, do not play him without at least some probability control support because you need to be able to bump those doubles when they happen and if you can defend on the hand up the 18 or 17 make them all double fours instead of double threes that's probably way better in your favor yep most definitely all right next up we have francis fanny himself ajax gotta spell it out for you francis <laughs> did you get your name from soap <laughs> <laughs> oh the jokes never end they never end <laughs> so he's got a trait and two special powers Trait is, I stole your teleport frequency. Watch out for this, guys. It's nuts. Once per game, if, it, if Ajax is at least five squares from each starting area, not hard to do, you may give him a power action to choose a character named Deadpool within eight squares. Place the chosen character adjacent and deal that character one penetrating damage. So he basically pulls Deadpool right to you, Takes, gives him a penetrating, penetrating damage. damage. And then you can, is that power action or free action? Power action. Okay. Well, the next turn, you get a follow up. Or the rest of your teammates, even though he yep. has 140 points. That's true. It's the price of a joker these days, it's not too bad. If you, if, and, and you guys will see Deadpool. Like with this new set out fresh, those shifting focus Deadpools are great. This guy's going to be pretty good against him. Um, his speed power, which he used for the first four clicks, is called Hyper Flight. No, Hyper Fight or Hyper Flight. At the beginning of your turn, choose one. Ajax can use Hypersonic Speed this turn, or Ajax can use Flurry and modifies his attack value by plus one this turn. So he's up to a 12 or 11. So you pull Deadpool in when he's got two action tokens, give him penetrating damage, he has to clear, then you pick Flurry, and you beat his face in. <laughs> Well, unless they shift over to one of the free phasing one, they maybe a few depends if they've got them. Yeah, and then he has, of course, eleven attack with pet prison strike, indomitable, eighteen with impervious, and prob control five range. Um, his defense, no, sorry, his damage power that he gets on the last four clicks, four through seven, it's called shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Ajax can use battle fury when attacking. Ajax deals penetrating damage and Tarth can't use super senses. Wow. He hunts down spider people. Yeesh. And then aside from that, late dial, he just gets the uh, hypersonic with 10 attacks, invuln toughness, as you guys see there. Not bad for 140 points. I could see him on a weapon X team at the very least. Armor brutes are good too, so. Yeah, not too shabby for Ajax there. Don't forget armor you can drop at your cast on him. That's a little excessive, but sure. He was also one of these outlet perplexed through Outlet range. perplexed, Ooh. yeah. There you go. All right, up next, Colossus, number 56, X-Force, X-Men, Armor, who you can also give Joe Costa. That armor keyword, just slipping him in there, man. Yeah. Uh, ignores hindering train for movement purposes. Traded super strength, Russian strength. And uh, he can use uh, his special movement power that he has 
on his higher point value for two clicks, on his lower point value on his first click, uh, he can use charge and breaks through blocking terrain. Love to see that on a Colossus, just break through that wall. You know, uh, I've heard a lot of flack about this guy uh, being 150 points or 80 points. You know, people have said we've had better versions in the past. Considering that um, most of those are retired now, except for the 50 point version. Who is or, not shabby at or all. Or going to be retired soon. Uh, I love this 150 point Colossus. I mean, 11 attack, super strength, 4 damage. Uh, ultra heavies while they're in play. That'd be 7. I could break through a wall and come get you. 18 defense, willpower, invincible. Wow. He laughs at those green lanterns, that's for sure. And then even his lower point value, I mean, I've got uh, 8 charge, breaking through walls, 11 attack still, 4 damage still, 17 impervious, with close combat expert. So after I break an object over your head for 6 or 7, I'm then going to punch you for either 13 and 4, uh, 12 and 5, or 11 and 6. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm just going to keep coming because I've got... Indom. Indom. And, I mean, damage reducers his whole dial. Now, a simple outwit or a pen sight is going to take him down hard and fast. But, I mean, use those walls to your advantage, guys. Block yourself <laughs> off, break through them, yep. do some damage. X-Men TA for the added heals. I love the x-force team all together you guys know this but i love they finally gave us an orange costume a little disappointed they didn't give us a matching cable and forge is retired currently but i really look forward to running that that team there for some x-force action cable and the x-force all right next up we have cannonball this one was previewed little know what he does but we'll go over it real quick here he is 75 points with seven clicks of dial he can use charge force blast and breaks through um, blocking terrain and ignores character bases. When Cannonball moves four or more squares and only in direct path, increase his attack and damage value by plus one this turn. He has that for the first three clicks with 12, 11, 10 speed. That's nuts, That's guys. pretty dope. Just work on those lineup shots. Because he goes to 11 fours when he does that too. Oof. So, not too shit. With, with knockback, we, that got pulled in a, a battle royale. He just knocked me off the elevated, hit me for four, knocked me off, I took two more, I was done. That is... It's just like, well... It's, it's definitely a lineup shot. Like, a good TK placement with this guy would be beautiful. Or, you know, a sidestep from Pandora's box while it's still legal. Yeah. He also has a defense power for the first three as well, called Blast Shield. Cannonball can use Energy of Deflection and Toughness. When Cannonball moves four or more squares and only a direct path, he can use Invulnerability instead of Toughness until his next turn. So that means if you're just slowly creeping up every single turn, he'll keep that immobility. He does not have willpower, unfortunately, so he may be pushing, but the ESD will keep him safe as well. And then on his very last click, it's called External. Once per game, stop. Cannonball can use Generation normally or as a double power action. If he uses it as a double power action, do not subtract the two from, from the result. That means that he will not have to worry about completely failing and falling off that last click, and he'll get at least three clicks. No. One. At least one click. At least click. one click back. Yep. So that's pretty cool, even if he stays where he's at. But at that point, he's earthbound. Values are just eight and 15, nothing great. With two you're hoping for a big roll there and bring back the top click. Yeah, I'd recommend Prob around that, guys. In the X-Force, we've seen a couple good ones. Domino. And or... I Dupe. Mean, yeah, X-Men, doesn't uh, Negasonic have X-Men? Oh, yeah, so, Negasonic. There you go. So options, guys. Um, late Dial is just charge. Reflexes, close combat expert. Does have empower on the first, uh, second, third click, so he helps other guys punch harder. He's not bad. See if I have points for a flyer, puncher, just break through walls and... Taxi somebody in. Yeah. Pound them, drop somebody next he, to him. He has utility. It's just harder to play. So for those of you guys who are like thinking, oh, how am I supposed to move four squares directly? Like, well, your opponent's going to try and be in the most obscure... Directions they can because they're going to be afraid of that 11 4. I just highly recommend some, some kind of give him sidestep or give him TK in a team to make him line up right where you want him. But you also got to remember when you do that uh, that direct uh, line in, in a straight line, you do have three that you would be adjacent to for your close combat. When you do diagonal, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five people or five or six squares, maybe even seven that you could be adjacent to. To make those shots so really line up your diagonals in hopes of doing that because they don't have to be directly in front of you 
you just have, still have to have that base contact to do Somewhere that close combat that attack. Yep. So, all right, up next, number 58, Strife. Real name, Strife. You mean Nathaniel Summers? Oh. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. Spoilers. Um, Mutant Liberation Front, Armor, Future. Man, just squeezing in that Joe, Joe Costa everywhere. Yep. Um, trade, the Legacy Virus. When Strife is KO'd, yep, that's right, they scored 135 points on you. Uh, choose a named keyword. That's right, you don't choose until he dies. Yep. Opposing characters to that keyword are dealt penetrating damage equal to half their current click number. This can't be ignored. So you're really hoping this is actually done later in the game when everyone's hurting, not top dial. And then you just take a bunch of people with you. Yep. I mean, click four, take two damage. Penetrating damage. Penetrating. Click six, take three. Oh. <laughs> click ten, take five. So you guys will definitely see him be a primary target very early game. You want to keep him back. I know it's tempting to get him in there with the power he has coming up, but... Yeah, so he his uh, special uh, attack power, he can use TK, he can use a free action uh, if he's been given a non-free action this turn. So you can move him and then TK. Yep. So he basically has kind of running shot TK, that's pretty awesome. Kind of, yeah. Or you could TK and then TK <laughs> for 135 <laughs> points. You do have that option, double TK for yep. that much. And then he's got leadership and outwit on his top click and his last three clicks. He's got, man, he's got that mind over matter power, the TK for first three clicks mm -hmm. his dial is a little all over the place he starts with 10 movement and stealth has special attack power special damage power in Volm. goes to mind control and range combat expert with seven range and goes to running shot pulse wave with toughness finishes out with a regen click with four damage and pulse wave at nine with stealth i have to say for 135 points i am looking forward to playing him and if you play against people who play theme teams a lot just get some stuff out there that's just gonna like do some, wreak some havoc, penetrating damage, a lot of energy explosion. Just get people onto click two, three, four, and then just wait for them to pop off strife and you'll probably pull a win. Yeah. It's so like, go ahead, kill him. Do get it. In. Do it. All right, so then we have number 59, Hammer. Six pack soldier. This guy is crazy good. Mike will have a story for you guys here in a second. So he has a trait, custom built hover chair. Hammer can't carry characters that are his size. So he's standard, only tinies. That's okay. His special attack power, which is for the first three clicks are, that's more like a personal tank. <clears throat> when Hammer makes a range attack targeting a single opposing character, he may also target all opposing characters adjacent to that target. When you do, modify Hammer's damage value by plus one for each hit target so basically you pick a dude say okay next to three guys i'm gonna roll and then i hit them all and i deal my damage which starts at two let's see three four ah five Bleh. wow and then also on top of that he has enhancement and range combat expert and since range combat can only target one character this power can trigger off of that so you can go i'm gonna go one and one so three up to a max of three, six. Don't forget he's also got shield TA, so oh, anybody standing next to him can shoot further. Yeah, he does have shield as well. So if you're making a shield team, he's very handy. He doesn't have the keyword, but that's okay. Soldier teams mostly always have so shield anyway. So which story am I telling? The ROC story or the Apocalypse story? Either one. Whatever one you think is more <laughs> fitting for this character. So when I saw Hammer get pulled during pre-release, I looked at him and was like, gasp! Is the Prime version of him actually Apocalypse? Because I didn't know about WizKid at the time. Because, I mean, seriously, I look at his sculpt and I'm just like, tubes, armor, neck bit, thing around the face. I mean, if you lose the, the, the jump jets on the chair and just make it a chair, I can see Apocalypse rocking that. You know, totally could see it. We'll probably see a resculpt of that in the future. Would not surprise me. But, I mean, I even showed it to George, who's a major Apocalypse fan. He's like, I can see it. And then I found out it was WizKid, and I was like, otherworldly disappointed. Dang. <laughs> but uh, also, ROC had to run against a couple of these. Hard-fought battle, you guys would be able to see it. But uh, in the end, patience and annoyance are right. out. <laughs> <laughs> they are 50-point cannons. They are not terrible. All right, up next, WizKid, the super rare prime, number 59B. 
Initiative X Factor, real name Taki Matsuya. Hover chair, can't carry anybody, traded. Sorry, I can fly, but you're not coming with me. Uh, special attack power for his whole whopping three clicks. Uh, adjacent friendly characters modify their attack, range, and damage values by plus one. Wow. Wow. Sidestep on his uh, last two clicks. Toughness his whole dial. Starts with an 18. 25 points for this guy. You know, put a bunch of stealthy snipers right in front of him. Block that line of fire. Surround him. Give them all plus one to the range, attack, and damage values. Uh, I mean, attack and damage values, you think about close combat people, if they're trying to get in close to take him out. This guy, you, you want to protect him for 25 points, but for the bonuses he gives, just nuts. And he's going to be stopping a little bit of energy explosion, at least one bolt's worth. Yeah, at the very least. So there's been a lot of, like, up and down talk with this character. People love him, people hate him. It's it's like I've been telling a lot of people at my venue. I think with the resources being phased out, they've said nothing about any kind of resource. I really think equipment, objects will be the thing in the future for this game going forward for a long time going. This guy is a miniature resource on your team. He can't be carried because he has the flat of people who ignore symbols. And he has to move by himself, so it costs you an action on your force. I think that's what people are saying he's garbage because he's not just going to do the do thing he should do unless you actually put effort into him. That's a lot of do. It's a lot of do. But... If you can set it up on a map that gives you total range of fire, a couple of seven, eight range cannons who get nines, even Nick Fury's still legal with this guy. It's Ugh. ten range of just I see through all and shoot the crap out of you. Holy monkeys, guys. This guy has potential. Now, it's going to take a little while for us to become relevant, I think. But once the game is in that new home and we have the new rules and everything's been kind of rotated to a certain point, this guy will shine. So if you can get a hold of one and are okay with keeping him, I think his value will retain, and he'll be good. So. Or if you're really not feeling it, Eric's still looking for one and willing to trade for it, so reach out to him via Facebook, because this guy is jonesing like it's nobody's <sighs> business to have this figure, because he thinks it's going to be the next new meta wave, and he doesn't want to have to face it down and be like, I don't have that piece, and I just got beat with it. It's, it's a frame of mind, but yeah. Hook him up, guys. If you've got one you're willing to let go, or if you got more than one, you can never run more than one. Talk to Eric. He'll trade you something for it. He'll make it fair. Yep. All right. Mine, mine last? Well, oh, you got one more after I, I, I've got the LE. We're going to run the LE in the super rares, but uh, okay. last super rare here. <sighs> Mouthful. <sighs> okay, here we go. Strap in, guys. Deadpool. Merc with a mouth. Title character. Initiative X Factor. <laughs> if you look at WizKid, he is also Initiative X Factor. And if you look at the back of the card, the significant appearance is X Terminators number one, which is also the significant appearance of WizKid. So we're thinking there's some uh, issues there. We're looking forward to an errata of the proper keywords. Or if those are the proper keywords, you know, hey, run WizKids with them. <laughs> WizKid and uh, uh, Stingray for Initiative. Dude, if you play this guy in WizKid, it's only 95 points. Did you know that? Yep. That blows my mind. Yeah. Anyways. Start show. covering that tile character. We've got a lot to go through this here. Text. <sighs> well, you don't want to read it. I'll read it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right, so trait. Title character abilities. See inside. All right, there's the page for you. <laughs> and title character. Title characters have special title character abilities indicated by a black book and a white book that let them gain and spend plot points when activating them. To activate a top character ability, give the character a free action, choose the ability, and then add or remove a number of plot points as indicated by the ability. Title characters may only activate one title character ability per turn. You may not activate a top character ability if doing so would result in less than zero plot points. Title character abilities can't be countered or ignored. That just means the stuff in this part. His actual powers abilities can be outwitted just <laughs> normally. <laughs> we did learn that. So. so his first black book, he has two of them. They are they say, after clearing action tokens, if Deadpool Merc with a mouth activated title character ability this turn and didn't attack an opposing character this turn, deal him one unavoidable damage. So if he activates any abilities from a list here soon, he takes one unavoidable. However, I have seen that if he goes to click two he can basically stay right there. 
and just keep gathering these things. Oh yeah, that's Absolutely. that's a little busted. And I thought that he actually would just keep taking damage, but the heal makes him so good. Next one: When Deadpool Merc with the Mouth is KO'd after action resolve, give each friendly character on the map two action tokens that do not deal pushing damage. I just just forgot about that one. So when he dies, oh yeah, your friendly characters get punished for it. So you're playing this at a risk for how good it is, but it also be detrimental to you as well. Okay. So basically your whole force is on shock and awe that your title character died. It's like, <gasps> how will the story go on without uh, the title character? <laughs> exactly. All right, first open book here. It's black one, plus one. So uh, having fingers is for weaklings. Fingers. Who needs them? Heal Deadpool Mark of the Mouth up to one click. And that will say up to one click, so if he's on top click, he can go ahead and just not heal and get a plus one to his plots. He does start with three, so that goes up to four. Minus two, I am the ultimate distraction. Opposing characters' combat values can't be increased until your next turn. Basically a whole board Nighthawk Prime. For a turn. For a turn. That cost of two tokens. Still very powerful, because it goes through their turn as well. Yep. And then his very last one, minus six, slow mo, slow mo bullet time. Deadpool Mark with the Mouth makes a ranged combat attack using improved, hindering, out of base contact, and characters. Um, targeting each pushing character within range and line of fire, which he has six. Each hit character is dealt two penetrating damage, suitable damage. Deadpool Mark with the Mouth can use probability control during this attack. And so as I was saying, guys, if you just keep him on click two and just keep on pushing up and down those plot points, he gets that really, really quickly. And you can running shot, do an attack, and then and drop six tokens and slow-mo bolt time, everybody. Yep. And this character's only 70 points with eight clicks of life, guys. The first three clicks are all range-based, running shot with ESD um, and range combat expert. He does have Indomitable. Next three are all charged with uh, blades or none, reflexes, and close combat expert. And the last two are stealth and regen with 18s and 17s. Regen on top of his other regen. Yes. Yes. I have fought against this character myself once, and holy cow, dude. He actually got up to that, like, bullet time thing, hit all my characters with a critical hit for three. Mm. It was... It barely just well killed me. I still won that game because of points, but all the guys were just crippled in the last clicks, so that was rough. And you played against him too in the ROC. Oh yeah, it was pretty rough all the way around. Think he's meta worthy? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I have yet to see him be used in a way that's just like OMG. But he's he's good. I I see this this character becoming a crutch for a lot of people that they're just like, oh, I'm gonna sit in the back and wind him up and throw him out there. And, Running shot you once, and then do a bunch of damage, and then run him away, and then my rest of my team's gonna follow in and clean up while he sits in the back and does nothing. Seriously, right? So. And or minus two. Oh, your ESD and reflexes don't matter for nothing now. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the end of the super rares. We are gonna cover the LE uh, number one hundred one Terror Heroes for Hire Detective Monster. Uh, his real name possibly Shrek. Uh, he won't be needing it. When an adjacent standard character is KO'd, so adjacent standard character, uh, choose a standard power that character could use on any click. Terror can use that power for the rest of this game. Oh, what's that? Hellcow died standing next to me? I can now use hypersonic speed. Oh, what's that? A Morlock, 10 point Morlock died next to me? Let's uh, look at this dial and see what I can, what I can pick from. Hmm. Yeah, what, Crazy Jane? I think she's got every power in the game. Just a uh, honor dial. <laughs> God. But uh, anyway, and so that's his trade. Um, his defensive power, which he gets on his last three clicks. Does everyone on this team have a healing factor? Terror can use toughness and use and can use regeneration, that regeneration, with a minimum result of one. So we're coming back to life. And then his first three clicks, he gets uh, Outwit, but can only counter pink powers. No sidestep, no invincible, no empower, no precision strike. Just counting those pink powers, because he's wearing pink. He's color-coordinated. Now, this uh, particular power 
goes along with the Fast Forces uh, that we've seen released, that they all have their color and they will be able to outwit only that specific color of power. Which so. is pretty freaking cool. That's never been done before. Well, when you look at it, we'll be able to do probably dark blue, mm -hmm. if not light blue, uh, dark green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, and if they squeeze a Deadpool in there, rare, which I think they did. It's red. Yeah, they did. Yeah, red. So, sorry, not rare, red. The other, Rojo. Rojo. <laughs> Rojo. <laughs> but uh, his his dial, sidestep, 10 attack, uh, invincible starting, 3 damage, goes into impervious, stealth, and then regen uh, with exploit the rest of his dial. You really look to stand next to people where it be friendly or opposing, KO them, and just pick up powers and just turn them into whoever you want. Now, I would question with Jakeem. If I were to KO Jakeem, do I just get to pick any power? Because he can pick any power at any one given point? Mm -mm. No? Okay. So, pick a power is not up your alley, but if you have traits that say this character can use charge and flurry, you could pick either one of those. So, yes. sacrifice people, get people standing next to him, just do what you can to doll him up, and uh, run him with that uh, Fast Forces pack when it comes out. He's, he's built go together with them well guys this has been the uh the super rare review with added le for your viewing pleasure hopefully that you guys have found this helpful to know what to uh go for when it comes to these super rares or what to expect when fielding them or having them fielded against you uh, please like comment subscribe let us know how we're doing and uh you know if you feel we missed anything or if uh, you have a different opinion about a character feel free to comment let us know guys and remember always remember Strike first and strike hard.